As you know, string writing system provide a Turing complete model of computation. And since the beginning of the computation theory that was studied and um, uh, some classes of string writing systems have, has, has been in the, uh, identified as giving decidability results. Uh, and among them, we will be interested in monadic string writing systems. And uh, we will use them applying on languages families to see what happens in this situation, but not just in, on mo in usual monadic case, but in some monadic higher order ca case. And also the languages will be in some sense higher order. But uh, what, what, what is interesting for us in this work, especially the use of some generalized model of automata, which is very simple, in fact, as, as you will see. But our point is to avoid some implementation details. Because uh, when we work with different automata models, we have always to, to do with uh, some kind of memory, some push down store, etc. But here we, we view just uh, an automaton, like a structure, with binary relations. And, uh, these binary relations lab labels transitions, of course, uh, with usual letters of the alphabet. And we use two binary symbols, like almost like a unary symbol, because we put some loops to, to, to uh, indicate the initial states and the final states. But this is, the, of course, these loops are not used as we um, are interested when you are interested in path, which concern the language accepted by automata. But we use these loops for other constructions on automata, in fact. So, uh, which constructions we, we will make on automata, which kind of operations we need. Quite usual, uh, at least the, the first one with this joint sum. The second one is formally when we work with finite automata, often we need to connect them in some way. So, so we will use this uh, uh, inverse path functions, which I don't want to go to details because it's almost like, like a kind of logic of interpretation using monadic second order logic, for instance, but in some, some restricted, let's say, some kind of fragment of monadic second order logic. Because if we, if we take the whole power of, of MSO, then, then some, some result could, could, couldn't be obtained in this way. But this is just a technical point. And the other operation we need is the iteration, which has do, two forms of iteration, basic iteration and uh, full iteration. So the basic was defined by, by Stoop in 75, and the, the full iteration, uh, which was, works for any kind of relational structure, was uh, introduced by Muchnik, which is an extension of, of this basic iteration, as you will see. I don't want to explain the details of the definition of this uh, iteration. We'll, we'll look at the, at the example. But just let, let me say that if we start with a structure of uh, some uh, vocabulary uh, with binary relations. Then we have the iteration is uh, extended with two predicates, predicate symbol, b binary, which is successor, and unary, which usually is called clone. So let us have a look how it works on an example very simple with st finite structure with just two, uh, three, sorry, vertices, three states. And uh, what happens is that we, uh, every, uh, when we iterate the structure, every vertex has its own copy of the structure itself which is linked through this successor relation from the original uh, vertex. And uh, the clone, clone predicate in the gate, in the copy, the, in some sense, the origin. What's, what's the, the vertex the copy origins from? So this is applied. This, this copy is created for every vertex of the structure. Uh, uh, and we iterate this construction again and again, infinitely many times. Um, so in, as, as I said, in the, in the basic iteration, the only difference is that just we don't have this clone predicates, which is which has this black, uh, this, this um, ovals here, OK? So it disappears in the basic iteration. Um, so the, the, the construction is very interesting because it preserves the, the, the decidability of the monadic second order theory. Uh, namely, whenever we have a for, sorry, whenever we have a formula uh, on the iterated structure, Psi, then we may construct the formula uh, for the original structure, which is such that the both hold, uh, it is equivalent that one holds on, on one structure and the other on the other structure. So the, the proof of this result was first given in 84, but some, sh some kind of short paper, conference paper, I, I, I think it was stacked. And, and the full proof was, and the long, longer version was given by Valukevich in 96. Uh, and another interesting point about this iteration is also that full iteration, you may uh, 
interpret within full iteration the unfolding, unfolding from, from a given vertex of a structure, um, which is not really possible, which is not possible in the case of basic iteration. But, so now, this operation, we, we, we use them to, to consider a hierarchy of this simple model of automata as just as a relation structure, which where at the basic level, zero level, we have finite structures, and uh, we climb up in the hierarchy using this, this full iteration, and at each, at each level being closed by this inverse path functions, which is, as I said, monadic kind of restricted monadic single order interpretation. So this hierarchy is infinite, it is strict, and it may be defined in other ways also, using, for instance, instead of iteration, you may, we may use unfolding, and instead of these path functions, other operations which are very similar. So there are many variants of this. But, of course, the question would be, but which kind of, which kind of languages we may obtain in such a way with this kind of automata? Well, um, so there is a kind of hierarchy also, where first two levels, zero and one, are regular and context-free languages. And then this, the, the level two was defined by Aho, Seti, and Ullman as so-called indexed languages. And then this idea of indexed languages, uh, language indexed grammar was extended by Maslow to, to, for any level. And he, he also showed further that the level N indexed languages, N indexed languages are accepted by some kind of level N pushdown automata, which is in fact, uh, let us just have a, take a kind of level two these are pushdown automata with stacks of stacks. So level three has stacks of stacks of stacks and so on. And there were some, also some other characterizations of this uh, hierarchy using, using uh, recursive program schemes. Uh, so uh, if we go back to this general model of automata we use, in, in fact, uh, this is also uh, somehow which is related to this hierarchy of indexed uh, languages, namely a language is indexed if and only if it is an index, if and only if it is accepted by a level and automaton. Okay, so we want to apply it to, to string rewriting. String rewriting is just a way of transforming words into words using rules. We, by identifying within a word a left-hand side of a rule, which is like this, and replacing left-hand side by, by the right-hand side within the word. So we get in such a way stri uh, single step string rewriting relation and which may be applied iterated and we get as a transitive closure the string rewriting relation. Uh, well, it's, I will skip the example, it's quite obvious. And the, the, the important property we, we, we need and often need, you, you will meet them often, are confluence. Namely, if we have a possibility to rewrite if, in different ways a given, a given word, then there is always a possibility to join these two paths. So in this case, we say that system is confluent. And also what is important, be able to stop. Uh, stop mean we, we don't have an infinite chain of rewritings and this is called Netherian uh, as for relations also. And th this both properties, uh, when we have, we call that the system is canonical. Okay, so then the monadic case of a string writing system, this is the one which interests us. Uh, monadic system is the one which on the right hand side has only letters or empty words. So something very simple. Um, but this is not necessarily Netherian, as we, have, may, we may have rules, uh, letter which gives letter, uh, but this, this kind of difficulty which is easily overcome by considering classes, uh, equivalence classes, and then, then we get some, some equivalent Netherian system and some very easy transformation. I don't want to go to details. But, so we, which kind of question we, we may ask? We may ask uh, the questions about which kind of languages we get by applying string rewriting either forwards, like this, on the language, or backwards, in reverse direction. And, uh, of course, the study went ver very quickly with this monadic string rewriting system beyond finite case, uh, by considering regular uh, monadic string rewriting systems, or context-free, uh, regular, uh, when we, have, we consider the left-hand sides corresponding to a given letter, letter C, say LC, um, all these languages should be regular languages, and in context free, of course, all these languages should be context free for every letter, right, every right hand side. So, the, the, some, some old results, important results about this, this kind of uh, apply, applying rewriting to languages. If we have a context free language and uh, a context free string rewriting system, then the pre-image via string rewriting system is, again, context-free. 
It's not very surprising. And uh, if we have, in the deterministic case, when we have a regular language and a finite canonical string writing system, we get a deterministic context-free language. So this is by backward uh, writing and uh, rewriting forward. It works very well for regular languages, namely when we apply no matter which monadic second or the, uh, sorry, monadic uh, string writing system, finite, infinite, any case, we always get a regular language. And uh, when uh, the string writing system is context free, then th this may be, this, this language, uh, the regular language may be computed in polynomial time. But, of course, mm, we cannot improve it. This result uh, in the, for the case of uh, sorry, context-free languages. When we want to see what happens for context-free lang languages by post-image, we may get a non-recursive language. So, I will skip perhaps this examples of Benoit theorem. And what, what will interest us, of course, we will be interested in S-indexed monadic string orienting systems. So, those systems where the language of left-hand size for, for each letter belongs to uh, S family of n, n index languages. So then we, we may see all the rules having the same right hand side as being represented by an automaton, level n automaton, accepting all the words having the same right hand side. So see it like in this way. And um, well, it's not, not difficult to obtain the following corollary in this case for. Um, uh, using uh, n index string writing, monadic string writing applied to, to regular system that we have, of course, regular language will be constructed effectively also in this case. So now let have a, let's, let us have a look for pre-images of n index uh, monadic uh, via under n index monadic string writing. Uh, and let us start to have a look in the case when we only apply it once or so. Remember that we have, of course, the language which is accepted by some here by some level n automaton. So we have a let let have a closer look on this automaton. We have a state. There is a transition, perhaps not necessarily deterministic automaton. So we, so we may have, we may have another transition outgoing from the same state, and uh, there are some of of course other other paths between these states. We will we have some initial states some finite states also, uh, which are perhaps connected by, with path, by paths with the states we consider. And uh, we have now, we want to rewrite backwards those letters, which are right-hand sides of rewrite rules, replacing by left-hand sides, which are, which are words, words accepted by this automaton. So the construction is quite natural here. We need to just connect, go from the state to initial states of the automaton, and go back then to the state P. And of course, the similar thing has to be done with, this, with the state Q. But we, we need a, a private copy of this state, especially for the state. So we have a private copy for, for every state, and of course, every letter, because this automaton corresponds to, to a given letter. So this is for, for letters of the alphabet, but for um, for the right-hand side being the empty word, we need, of course, connect directly to the same state, again, using a private copy of each state, so for this state, for that state, and for, for the other also. So, wh what we get is, at the end, of course, we, we need to forget these initial states and final states and use only those from the original automaton, so then we may accept words in the language, starting here, uh, going through on the bottom level in the original automaton. On, if we climb to the other automata, then we'll accept some uh, language obtained by rewriting by single step, but in several independent places, possibly. So, so it, it's easy to see that in this situation, what we'll obtain using n indexed uh, string rating system and uh, uh, m indexed language, we will get this pre-image as being the maximum of n and m, and possibly also one. The one appears because if you take zero here for n and zero for m, we already know that we go to context-free languages. So this is why it is like this. And now, if you want to rewrite it repeatedly, then we have to iterate this process, this construction. And, and 
if you if you look if you look at this iteration that it looks very like basic iteration in fact we don't need this clone predicate in this case and we need some result in order to apply to this case the result about basic iteration is, which is the following the class of level n structures is closed under basic iteration so this is very different from the uh, from the full iteration which which Go, which leads to, to climb in the hierarchy. Here we stay at the same level of the hierarchy. And, and as we see, um, the, this clone predicate seems to be very essential. So the extension which was, which was given by Muchnik was, is essential to get some more expressive power. So then, of course, we, we have the, this, this following result, namely, what, like, like before, but just we have the star which appears here. We, we have the maximum of this N and M. We climb uh, at the maximum, or rather we stay at, at the maximum. So to, to put it just simple, if we have, a, if we have a, an index language and uh, we apply inverse image by a system which is at most n index, then we stay at the same level. So every, every level of the lang n index language hierarchy is closed by, by this relating by n index systems. So now we would like to investigate the deterministic case. What happens if our languages we want to rewrite as they are deterministic? Um, well, what happens if we use n index deterministic systems, then uh, we, we, we know that we will not, we, we will don't stay on the same level, but we, we, we don't know exactly what happens. Do we climb some, some more levels when we want to stay deterministic? Of course, former results, now, by a former result, we know what that we, we have a language which is of the same level, but we know that it will not be necessarily deterministic. So what happens exactly, we don't know. We, at least we know what happens in the case when the um, system is regular. Namely, we stay with the, uh, at, at the level zero of the hierarchy. And then, then to, to get a deterministic result, we need at least these two restrictions that ha S has to be, system has to be confluent. Because you know, if we don't have confluence, then this is like a, some kind of non-determinism. And uh, uh, also, we need only to work with irre irreducible words with respect to the string rating systems. Because, it, in fact, it's easy to see that it doesn't make much sense which, when we use this language which is with reducible words and for, for the deterministic case. So, uh, how, still, however, if we take the, the following example of the, of the language which is deterministic context free, and we apply this single step rule, uh, the single step system on it, which gives us something like this. Again, of course, a language which is context-free, but which is not deterministic context-free. It's not very difficult to show that this is not deterministic context-free. So, so what happens exactly with, this, uh, with the determinism? To see it, we, we need to use something which is called Cayley automata. And um, this Cayley automata is like Cayley graphs for groups, uh, just the generalization to the case of string rate systems. Uh, they have uh, as vertices all irreducible words, so the words we cannot rewrite, uh, and we have sigma labeled, labeled edges, and from the word U there is an A labeled, labeled edge to the word V. Whenever, when we take the word UA, we may rewrite it into the word V. So remember, both U and V are, are irreducible here. So for instance, in the following case, if we take the, we have the, for this, this string rating systems, we have an edge between AA to B labeled by B, because if we add at the end of AA the letter B, then we may rewrite it three times and we end up with B. So this is how it works and we get some, some, some kind of uh, graph, Cayley graph like this. And the Cayley automaton is just uh, this kind of graphs, Cayley graphs with initial and final states, namely we have only one initial st state which, which will be always epsilon, empty word, and uh, the set of final states will be specified explicitly as a, as a set, of course, of irreducible words. So what we know about Cayley automata is that the, the automaton is of, is, of course, deterministic and complete when the system is canonical. And uh, also, it is not difficult to see that the language accepted by such an uh, automaton is precisely the pretty much of the, of the language of final states of the automaton. In the case when the system is canonical and monadic. And what we may establish is that the Cayley 
uh, automaton is deterministic level n plus one automaton when uh, the language of finite states is deterministic and indexed and as is canonical and regular. So I will skip the, the proof and this leads us to, to the following result about the, in the deterministic case when, when we have the um, canonical and regular string writing system and a language deterministic level and the n index language, then the pre image is deterministic level n plus one index language. So if we combine the two theorems in the non-deterministic and deterministic case, then we see that uh, starting with the deterministic n index language using a canonical and regular string writing system, we get a language which is n indexed. So at some level it is n indexed, but if we want it to be deterministic, it is only deterministic going one ever level higher in the hierarchy. Yes, so we, we wanted, we, we believe that with work would be some kind of uh, promoting the use of this infinite automata because this, uh, they, they are very nice to, to, to use and it's quite easy to establish some gen more general results than, than studying particular kind of, of, of usual automata, Poisson automata or higher order Poisson automata. And uh, uh, we would like to continue this work beyond the monadic case. Thank you very much for your attention.